What's up, everyone? Chris Beans here with Bowler's Rant, bringing you some breaking information from the USBC approved ball list. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on those notifications. I should start calling this the USBC banned list because that's what we've been talking about lately. And there is an update regarding the purple hammers. That's right. We talked about this a few days ago where the purple hammers, uh, specifically 2016, 2017, were being uh, banned from nationals. Now they're just banned, period. Okay, so... This is hot off the press. I'm pulling this off bowlersmart.com, and there is the credit to Aaron Smith here from USBC Communications. This was for immediate release. USBC revokes approval of 2016 and 2017 Purple Hammer balls. So what's going on here? We're talking about these balls that were made in 2016, 2017. They were approved. They are no longer approved. Effectively, March 21st, 2002. These model years may no longer be used in USBC certified competition having trouble with my mouse here yep here we go so you can't use this for leagues tournaments nada do not pass go do not collect 200 dollars uh these balls manufactured during that time 2016 2017 are easily identified by the serial numbers that start with a six or a seven so if you've got a bowling ball that's got a six or a seven on there that's a purple hammer urethane you are going to be out of luck uh, unclear if they mean just regular purple hammer urethane or all purple hammer urethane i'm willing to bet it's all you know they're not going to do something that uh, specific, I don't think. So where is this coming from? So the USBC investigated allegations that a portion of the Purple Hammer bowling balls manufactured at the Ebonite International Plant in 2016 and 2017 were produced below the USBC minimum hardness specification at that time, which was at the time 72D. So allegations, that means somebody, we got a whistleblower here, who is coming forward saying, hey, I've got some information about this, right? So they talk about, you know, some backstory, how Hammer was bought by Brunswick and Ebonite. You know, the, those brands, after, you know, the Ebonite plant was closed. Brunswick bought all the brands. We all know that. After employee, Ebonite employee, made public comments on this matter, USBC conducted an investigation, okay? And they interviewed, what they're saying is, more than a dozen individuals, including forward or Ebonite employees, to attempt to validate the claim. Brunswick cooperated with the investigation. Initial findings were when we covered the March 7th story. That was just, you know, two weeks ago. And that the national tournament would prohibit the use of these balls, right? Okay, so we know that. Now, following that announcement, we've got this additional information provided to the USBC, causing the investigation to be reopened. Four additional interviews were conducted. Wow, this is getting spicy here. So they're talking about they're meeting with additional people, getting more additional commentary, you know, saying, hey, some of these balls were not there. So the, to the specification. USBC has the authority to revoke approval of a bowling ball if it determines production balls do not comply with the current specifications outlined in the USBC Equipment Specifications and Certifications Manual. Wow, that's a mouthful. Based on all information gathered from the investigation, USBC has made this, made this determination about the 2016-2017 Purple Hammers. Okay, now here's where it gets a little interesting. During the USBC's investigation, former employee, employees, including ones with first-hand knowledge provided statements to the SBC outlining how processes in 2016, 2017 led to some of the Purple Hammers being produced and set to the field below 72D. So there's a change in the manufacturing process somehow that was making these balls a little bit soft. That's what I guess what the allegation is. Multiple former Ebonite employees confirmed that a production change took place in 2017 to raise the hardness of Purple Hammers produced in 8, 2018 and 2019. Okay, cool. So that sounds like it's reasonable. 2018, 2019, those balls are still legal at this time. And if I'm not mistaken, someone can fact check me on this. I think if it starts with an 8 or a 9, you should be good to go. So USBC has shared its determination with Brunswick and has Brunswick support. Brunswick will continue to offer owners of the 2016 or 2017 Purple Hammers the option to exchange their balls for a new Purple Hammer or product of their choice. Wow, that is awesome. Brunswick, again, kudos to you. This can be done on site at the 2022 USBC Open Championships or USBC Women's Championships by claiming a replacement ball at, and then you've got the website here, okay? And then they go on in the article, finally say that you cannot use unapproved bowling balls in USBC certified competition. If you use these 2016, 2017 hammers prior to March 21st, 2022, with no prior knowledge of their balls being out of specification, you would not be subject to forfeiture under USBC rules, okay? etc 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 so what they're really talking about here is hey 2016 2017 they did the research the balls in these years are too soft and are likely to be under the specification so they're revoked 
no longer there. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Go straight to jail. So those balls are no longer approved. So the SPC is on a roll right now. We've got the Purple Hammers have been banned. Got the Spectre that has been revoked. What else is coming, right? I've heard a lot of, I've had a lot of people, you know, blowing me up on the channel through the comments in text and Facebook Messenger telling me that the USPC is looking at all kinds of stuff. So, you know, where is this show going next? You know, kind of a rodeo show, right? It's just kind of going round and round. And where does it all end? You know, what's going to happen? Sounds like Brunswick is playing ball. Don't, don't know that they have a lot to stand up on, especially since those balls were made before Brunswick owned them. So Brunswick's backing them up. Kudos to Brunswick on that. Uh, it's definitely different than the storm situation, but these balls are no longer allowed. And that's going to make a lot of people very sad for two reasons. Number one, those balls do hook. They do move and they fetch a pretty penny on the second market. When you look at them on eBay or on the Facebook groups, you know, and now if they're a six or a seven, <laughs> they're, they're just fancy, you know, paperweights. No one's going to use them. Of course, someone will make the argument you can use them in non-USBC certified competition. That is absolutely true. You can do that, and there are those sweepers in tournaments where nobody cares. But I doubt you're going to be fetching four or five hundred dollars for a ball like from those anymore. That's just not going to happen. And anybody who's trying to charge, you know, some ridiculous amount of money for those six or seven serial number bowling balls are just going to be you're living on Mars. <laughs> and good luck to you. You know, free market always wins. So that's what we got for today. Want to know what you have to think about it? What do you think about these balls getting their certification revoked? Do you agree with this? Well, what do you think about all this hearsay? Sounds like they did an investigation and, and, you know, investigated, you know, with some people. So what do you think about, you know, what people are saying and all about the situation and just about the USBC being on this, you know, path in front of us? Let me know what you think. Drop me a comment. Let's, as always, continue the conversation. More updates are coming. And until then, bow well.